Time flies. It's getting on for almost a year since I last looked at this format. This is the Compaq. This is, well, effectively a two-in-one format because we've got an eight-track tape for the audio and 16 millimeter film for the photo slideshow. The reason I'm mentioning it today is there's been a bit of a development. I got some more equipment that can play these. If you remember back, if you saw the previous video about these, I got a set of them from a chap called River who works in a museum in Wales. They didn't have anything to play them on, so he got in touch with me, sent a few on, and I got together the equipment so we could have a look at what was on them. The equipment that I put together was a projector. There was a bit of an issue with it. Well, quite a few actually. First one is, I had to import it from the US because this format seems to be a lot more popular over there. It's from Labelle, and most of the Labelle equipment seems to be in the US. So I'd imported this projector over. It's got an issue that if it's run for about half an hour, there's a clutch that slips in it and therefore the film and the audio doesn't advance, it just slips on itself. So you have to turn it off and leave it to cool down for quite a while. In addition to that, there was a problem with the volume control. It was like either all on or all off, and it wasn't oxidisation, it was a faulty one. I had to run it off at US voltage, 60 hertz power supply, and I've only got 50 hertz here, so I used it through my uh, power bank. So there was a lot of things that were less than ideal, but it was enough to get it up and running and show it in a video. So that's all I wanted to do back then. The thing is, there's a lot of these cartridges. They had quite a few more of them. And uh, re ideally, they wanted me to be able to uh, record the contents of them and then supply them with uh, uh, video files to show exactly what was on each one. So you don't need to actually have the original equipment. Maybe they could put that into some kind of display in the museum or whatever. So I've been on the lookout for a better way to uh, record these. And uh, that's what I've got. Let me just show it to you. Here you go. Um, a little bit yellowed. I wonder if it was used by a travelling cigarette salesman trying to promote the latest brand of high tar cigarettes. Unlikely, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so this one, well, this, if you saw the video that I made previously, by the way, there's links to those at the top of the screen in the video description as well. But um, this was the model that I originally tried to buy from the US before that projector that I ended up getting. But for whatever reason, after I bought it, it got stopped at customs and turned around and sent back to the origin. And the explanation for that was unable to be exported. And I thought that was some kind of paperwork issue. Maybe someone hadn't filled in the right forms, that kind of thing. So I ended up getting that projector, the one that doesn't quite work properly. But uh, after I'd got that one, I thought, I'm going to go back and look for another one of these. I managed to find another one in the US and I ordered it. And again, the exact same thing happened. From a different seller this time, it got turned around by customs, unable to be exported. So uh, it seems like these are some kind of weapon of mass destruction or something. You can't get them out of the US. Then I managed to find one that was available in Germany, which of course is the one I've got here. And there was no issue with uh, getting an export from Germany to the UK. And the benefit of that is that this one runs on 240 volts, 50 slash 60 hertz. I'd never seen one outside the US before. This is the only one I've ever seen that's at 240 volts. So I'll be able to plug this straight into the power supply. No need to use step down power transformers ready that business. So in the end, I got the one I wanted. Yeah, I mean, I know it looks a bit yellowy, but it doesn't matter about that because when you record these things, I'm just going to frame that screen there. It doesn't matter about the case. What does matter though, is whether or not it works. I have not yet tried this one. So let's get on and do that. Right, now I'll give you a proper tour of it in a minute, but it's only worth doing that if I can get the thing working. So let me just plug the power in, first of all. So it's one of these standard power connectors. So it goes in like that. Right, we're all ready to go if this thing is. We'll find out. Right, the power is now on. Okay, here goes nothing. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's something. Ah, we have an image, brilliant. Obviously a bit blurry, let's get that in focus. Oh, our speed is wrong. Why are we at the wrong speed? Ass. Hold on a minute. Look at this, we've got a speed adjustment. 
one and seven eighths inches per second or three and three quarters. So let me just adjust that and we'll try again. This might be the easiest fix ever because it actually isn't broken, it's just on the wrong speed. So let's just knock that down. Right, let's try that again. Okay, power on. Uh, let's go. So look out for gyro bank account or free pay numbers in mail order advertising. Brilliant. They mean you can order goods here from yeah. your local post office. And in a moment, you'll see details of a great offer available through TransCash FreePay. Sounds too quick now, doesn't it? But I think that's right. And here's a great security idea. Available from Debenhams through Transcash at this post office. Now, I just need to move it forward a frame. So let's just adjust that on the side here. It is available here through Transcash. Door guard 3 is a do it yourself burglar alarm. It is simple and reliable. It requires no wiring because it operates from a self contained battery and it's so easy to install. Simply attach door guard 3 to your door. You don't even need any tools. Just use the self-adhesive pads provided and then position the magnet opposite on the door frame. The unit has two alarm modes operated by a personal Now you can switch. adjust the frames forward the and back to get it in sync, mode. which is what I'm doing at the moment. Opened, the 105 decibel siren will be activated and will continue to sound until the key switch is turned off. If you go out, the alarm should be set for delayed operation. This gives approximately 25 seconds delay, allowing you time to leave the house and close the door again. Door guard 3 is now automatically armed. When you return, there is a delay of approximately 10 seconds, giving you time to turn off the alarm. Right, now I am so glad that that's working because after I'd done the last video, I got back in touch with River at the museum and asked him if I could have the rest of the cartridges. Of course I paid for them, that money's gone towards the museum. And I've kept them in a bag ever since they've arrived. I haven't even looked in there. Let's just see how many I've got, because if this hadn't worked, that would have been a pretty useless purchase. So let's find out what we've got here. Oh, those are pretty dusty. Um, go right up my nose. Right, so I've counted them. We've got 15 cartridges. I suppose I'm the person with the most of these in the UK now. Bit of a unique collection. You see, these would have been provided to the post office to play in the machines in the branch or whatever. And then when they got a new one, they swapped out the old one. And I suppose most places would have probably just thrown it away or perhaps sent it back. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do, but I doubt there's very many that kept hold of them. So what we've got here are 15 little slices of history. And that's why I wanted to buy them off the museum because I was concerned that, you know, if nobody could play them at some point, they were just going to be chucked out. I think River actually said at some point they were going to be thrown out. So I wanted to, to get them and uh, hopefully we can see what's on some of these. Now I've noticed I've got a few of the little felt pads. Those are off the eight track tape part of it. Uh, I've got some spares of those. So some of these things might need a little bit of a repair job before I put them in this thing. Let's have a look around. On the top here, of course, we've got our carrying handle. That falls relatively flat to this section, which is metal. And on the front of there, we've got our focus wheel. This plastic section here has the speaker in it and, of course, the back projected screen. And to the left of there, we've got stop, start, fast forward, the power and the volume control combined. Now, the other one I had did not have a fast forward control. That is useful because if you're halfway through a presentation, on the other one, the only way to get to the end of it was just to let it run through the whole thing. Whereas with this, you could get back to the beginning again, because of course it's in a loop. Now, if we just look around on this side, at the top is where the cartridge goes in. I'll just take that out of there. And here's what's going on inside. At the bottom, it looks like a normal eight track mechanism. You've got the capstan on the right and the head in the middle, but the head is different in here. It's just a two track head one half of the tape contains the audio pulse that will advance the film and the other half contains the audio track to go along with it. Now above that head, in the centre there, that's where the film is pushed up against. There's a lens on the other side of there, but the light source for that is up in the top. I don't know if you can see it there, right at the top of the image. So the light comes down, hits a mirror inside the cartridge, sends the light through the film and out through that front part there. So we'll see how that looks from the cartridge side of things, where you can see the mirror in the top here, and that is angled to shine the light 
through this section with the film on the front of it and of course the light travels down and illuminates it like so and on the bottom that's our eight track style cartridge but of course as we just said it's a two track tape in there let's get back to the machine starting from the right hand side we've got a socket for a wide remote control i don't have one of those i don't need one either but there you go Next thing along, the option to switch off the lamp. That would leave you with the audio still playing, but with no images to accompany it. Next thing along though, this speed adjustment. Well, of course, we've already played around with that and we moved it into the correct speed of 3.75 inches per second for all my cartridges. But the fact that these cartridges do exist at one and seven eighths inches per second, even though I don't have any, makes you wonder why they don't all come like that. After all, the audio quality does not need to be top notch. It just needs to be understandable. Now this one, lets you advance the images to get them in sync with the audio or you can actually move them back the other way most of your cartridges should be fine to start with but if you ever notice the things that are out of sync well this is how you adjust that and then over here we've got an external speaker output and i plan on using this to capture the audio with a direct feed moving around to the back well that's where the power goes in i'm going to take this out though i don't think the original lead would have been this shape it would be correct for the socket but I think it would go off at an angle the reason I say that is because this can also work as the base of the device it will work as a projector and you can see here we've got feet and another foot here now to use it as a projector well first off that leg drops down if we press the metal lever next to it or at least it should do there we go so you can see I can rest it on that now, if I just move this around, you can see that this is where the image would come from if it was used as a projector. But if I shine a light through there, at the moment, there's no way that the image would be able to get out of there because there's a mirror in the way at an angle. It's sending the lights off down that direction. I'll show you. If I shine a light in here and move the lever, you can see that those are our options to send it out through this end or off to the screen and then finally on the base we've got this information panel which gives us details about the model number and the power supply requirements and of course earlier on i was only joking about this being tobacco stained i do know that it will have just gone this way due to exposure to the elements it needs retro brighting if you really wanted to make it look as good as new not something i'm interested in just to be sure though i tried cleaning off a bit on the bottom here to see if there was any surface muck on this at all and no it's very clean it's just gone yellow that's all now before i do anything else i'm going to take these four screws out and see if i can remove this top panel I can see the bulb in there looks like it's been replaced already so no doubt that's the section that comes off to get to that and once that's removed I'll be able to get to this fan over here and that's the thing that's making the noise and I've got some fan oil and hopefully I can quieten that down a little bit. Now here's why I had suspicions that the bulb had already been replaced because I could see this information through the top and of course it's relating to Germany and this device was made in the US so I thought maybe someone had already replaced it but it seems like this is the information as to where to get your bulb from and looking at it it's still the original bulb. You can see the bulb was made by GE in the USA. And slightly difficult to see from this angle but it's an EKG bulb that's 80 watt 19 volt. And as you can see, that's still the stock bulb. Oh, and you can see the original colour here on the front. But with that fan now oiled up, I'll replace the cover. All right, so I'll just plug my power back in and we'll have a look at one of these cartridges. Now, I've just picked a random one up here and you can hopefully see that the pads have fallen off the metal springs there. So I'm going to have to replace those.
Right, so that's it. They're both in. Both pads have been replaced, but it took me way too long. That was about five minutes to do that one. I'm going to have to get a bit more practice in on these. But as it stands, that should now play fine. So let's have a look at it. You know how many products and services are available at your local post office? Here's something for all the family. A range of Christmas gifts from the post office. On the 19th of November comes the special issue of Christmas stamps for 1985, based on the theme of pantomime. There are five stamps illustrating characters from our favourite pantomimes, like the 12 pence stamp showing a principal boy in Dick Whittington, or the 17 pence stamp, the genie of the lamp from Aladdin. This 22 pence stamp features a pantomime dame, Widow Twanky. Now, as you can see from that, it's out of sync. It's just one frame behind, so let's move it on. And don't forget the postcard-sized reproductions of these Christmas stamps, price 14 pence each. Also, the first day on the price 15 pence. All available from the 5th of November. Right, well, it all seems to be working just fine. Next, I want to try and get the audio directly out of this rather than recording it through the camera's microphone. So let me just switch this off for a second and I'll get the appropriate wires together. Okay, so here's the setup I've got. I'm using this headphone amplifier into which is plugged this blue cable. Now that is coming from the projector and it's delivering mono audio and it's only on the left hand channel. But with the aid of this button on the top here, I can switch that audio so that it will duplicate and come out of both channels, which is of course better to listen to. Now the audio comes out of the front here. This is a headphone socket, but I can adjust the volume level on it here to get it down to the right amount to send into the mic input on my camera to have the sync audio with the images. Now I've also got these headphones plugged into the second socket on here. That's just so I can monitor things to make sure that the images are in sync with the audio. Are you looking for a superb fashion catalogue for all your family? One that offers high quality merchandise? and pays you back one pound for every 10 pounds you spend. A catalog with over 800 pages that helps you spread the cost of your Christmas shopping by offering you 40 weeks, no charge credit. Then you need the new Grattan catalog. I'm gonna try adding this into the sound path to see if it improves things. So on these wires at the end, I'm gonna connect this plug. That's gonna go into the back of the projector. So that is our speaker level output going in here and then this box converts it into a line level output that comes out here. So let's try it. It can provide not only the special issue stamps themselves, but also first day envelopes, postcards, and special presentation packs, and albums to protect and enhance your collection. Also available now is the Times Prestige Stamp Book, which features the story of this famous newspaper in words and colour pictures. Well, that was surprisingly hassle-free. No issues with this one at all. It's just working perfectly. Absolutely no problems. But I've realised, of course, what doesn't work perfectly are things that you show on YouTube that work perfectly because people want to see a bit of drama. Will he get it working? Can he fix it? All that kind of stuff. Well, no, it's just working. So it's good for me, perhaps not for the viewer. Uh, now, one difference between showing something on this to the actual device that it was designed to be displayed on in the post office is that there's a couple of different cue tones on the tape. One advances the frames as it's doing now, but another one stops the playback. And the idea would be on the main unit that there was a bit of a timer in it because this thing didn't play continuously. There were like periods of time when you had a bit of a breather. So perhaps every couple of minutes or so, it would trigger the start and then that would play through a sequence like it's just done now. And then that trigger would stop it at the end. So. The difference is that with this, it's not going to start up again now. It's down to me to press that start button to get it on to the next program. Hello. Have you ever thought about collecting stamps? It's a fascinating hobby enjoyed by millions of people worldwide and is a pastime for all ages from the youngest upwards. Now, given the limitations of this medium, as well as the origins of all these cartridges being from the post office. I wasn't expecting this to be a gold mine of exciting content. However, 
I was hoping for a little bit more than what I've seen so far. It's turning out from the cartridges I've looked through that a lot of the similar programs are reused on multiple cars. So there'll be something about buying traveler's checks, for example, and you'll see that a few different times. But also within those little programs are put together, there's a repetition of the images that they use as well. There's a, a picture of a particularly dejected looking woman who looks trapped in a post office who they seem to reuse every time they say go and get these at your post office counter and the same picture of a post office appears over and over again not perhaps as exciting as I was hoping for even though I wasn't hoping for a great deal of excitement uh, maybe there'll be something on one of the other carts that's worth looking at but yeah given that it's all about the post office it's kind of a limited amount of things you can talk about but still on one of the other ones that River gave me one of the other cartridges that he gave me earlier there was an advert for hula hoops on there so I was hoping to get more of that kind of stuff but so far no luck with that but the only job that remains for me now is to try and capture the contents of these carts at the best quality I can and I've been experimenting with a different ISO levels and white balance and focal distances the images have a tendency to vignette if you get a little bit too close so you need to be sort of further away and then zoom in but there's only a certain amount of that you can do with this particular camera I might try some other cameras as well I've even thought about cutting out a piece of black cardboard to put around the screen to get a nice black frame around it because of course I'm recording in a 69 aspect ratio and the screen is much squarer than that so still a bit of playing around to do with this one yet but uh, I think I'll just finish the video here by um, showing you some of the footage that I shot earlier on some test footage just to see what was on these cartridges so I'll get on with that after I've said that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching Chipstead Film Productions bring to you this wonderful video programme on the life of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, with commentary by Richard Burton, based on the biography by Lady Longford. As she grows in experience, the counsel, encouragement and warning she gives will be heeded and valued by her government. The Queen leads two lives, her own and her country's. In private, she is laughing and spontaneous. And it is when she is at happy, informal gatherings that she shows this sunny side to her character. And when times are less happy, Britain has been fortunate to have an appealing young queen to send out like a dove from a battered ark. For well, this royal family would be projected as no other royal family had been seen or heard before. You can order this superb cassette here at your local post office for yourself or as a gift. Just go to the counter and ask for a transcash form. The counter staff will advise you how to fill it in. On the form, just quote free pay number one. Hand over the purchase price of £20.95, which includes post and packing, and your cassette will be delivered to you by post. Easy, isn't it? So why not ask now at the counter for a transcash form? And soon, you could be watching your very own video film of the life of our Queen.